Well, good morning, church. It's really good to, to be back in Toronto. Uh, I've been in Kansas City for a couple weeks. But this morning, I'm going to speak a message about uh, building up our spirit. Theme for this month has to do with building up the body. And uh, we want to uh, see our spirit built up, but we're going to talk about this. Holy Spirit, we love you. Thank you. Let your word run swiftly and uh, be glorified. How many of you know that you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body? All right? You are all three. Makes up you. But your body, by the way, is just your casing or it's just your, your earth suit that does not live into eternity. How many are happy you're going to get a new body, a new resurrected body? Okay. That one will be very perfect. And well, we'll know each other. But, but the soul... The soul in Hebrew is nefesh, and that means a living being, or in the, in the Greek it's called uh, suke, meaning our affections, our will, our desire, our emotions, our reasoning, understanding. So our inner self, called our soul, is also not dissolved by death, okay? That lives on, your soul. You will know who you are. We will know who we are. We will know one another if you knew, know, knew each other here on earth, that part of you that is your, the inner you, your mind, your will, your emotions. And in the spirit, in the Hebrew, it's ruach, meaning breath of God, which also can mean the breath of life or the spirit of God or the Holy Spirit. And in the Greek, it's pneuma, also having to do with breath and wind, but it means the part of a person capable of responding to God, of responding to God, again, not dissolved by death. Your spirit, your soul live on. Okay, so you can see here, this is, uh, I'm going to talk about this in a few minutes, but really how your spirit within your soul and then your body is just the, the outer part, what you see. But don't, just because you don't see your spirit, don't think you don't have a spirit, okay? You have a spirit. We have a spirit. I don't know how many of you know that there was interesting things going on. Uh, there was a news, just, uh, I read it, I think, yesterday, whether it was Fox or CNN on my computer, that there was a motorcycle accident unfortunately, where the motorcyclist died. By the way, I have two thou shalt nots in my family. Do you know that? I have two thou shalt not for my children. Thou shalt not ride a motorcycle, and thou shalt not get a tattoo. Hallelujah, okay. <laughs> now, if you're a tatted up motorcycle rider, bless you, okay, bless you. That was just a, a Bootsma family rule. So anyways, so this uh, motorcyclist unfortunately died, but uh, a passerby took a picture of the accident, you can look it up later, it took a picture, and above the scene of the accident, there is, you could see on the picture, a spirit. It's like you actually see like a body of person, and so, and this guy, he said, you know, I did not touch up this picture, and it's, it's interesting, you should look at it, but there's a lot of fascination right now about spirits. There's other, other things I've noticed in the news, they're like, oh, there's like a, a ghost in my house. Well, they're very, there's a very real spirit realm, okay? There is a very real spirit realm. I remember being a nurse, and I worked with a lot of people. I was in emergency room nursing for a period of time. And we saw a lot of people come in who had heart attacks or car accidents or whatever. And they would die. They would die in the, uh, in the ER. It was very sad at times. And I remember working on bodies that had just died and feeling, I am telling you, a feeling, a very strong sensation that there was something right here above my shoulder watching me work on this body. And then I'm like, ah! You know, it's almost like you could feel the departed spirit of the person that hadn't yet departed to wherever they were going. And so anyways, people that have out-of-the-body experiences talk about that, that they can see people, you know, working on their body. And so I experienced that as a nurse and had a lot of different encounters with people as they were dying or, or, or died. And so it's a very real thing. Now, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. He's the one, as we know, who convicts us of sin, draws us to Christ, enables us to accept Jesus as our personal Savior, assures us of salvation, enables us to live the victorious life, understand the Bible, all these things. And yet the Holy Spirit, he takes up residence in us. There was a man who came forward this morning to receive Jesus, hallelujah. But when he takes up residence in us, he obviously he takes up residence in our spirit, right? 
Yes, he becomes, and it says in, uh, it's like we are joined with the Spirit of God. We become one with him. And so that's fantastic. Doesn't mean all your problems go away. Doesn't mean that you uh, are perfect, but you are made positionally righteous before Jesus because of the blood of Jesus. And therefore, that is awesome. And you will live forever with him when you accept Jesus. And we, our bodies are part of this because in Romans 10.10, 10, it says that with our mouth, we make confession unto salvation. We make confession unto salvation with our soul. We choose the Lord. We, we, they're all working together here. We choose him. We say by an act of our will, I accept Jesus. So the spirit is it that's within you can respond to God or respond to the Holy Spirit through your soul. And your soul affects your spirit through decisions made and actions taken. So your spirit can dictate leadership over your soul and body, especially for good, when the Holy Spirit is in charge or the Holy Spirit empowers us. And it says in John 4, 23, it talks about, remember when Jesus was talking to the woman of the well, he said, for the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So when we worship, we don't just want to worship with a mind or just with our mouth or just, you know, you know, act like we're uh, doing something. I, my kids have been laughing at me. They've been teasing me that I watched a movie called Christian Mingle. Okay, Christian Mingle. I'm, I'm, I'm joking that I'm going to start my own Christian Mingle website because I know so many young people and have brought so many, you know, together. Hey, you need to meet so-and-so and they get married. Woohoo! Don't come up to me though and say, okay, who's my husband? Because I don't know everybody's mate. But anyway, so, but it was kind of funny, the movie. I'm not saying you have to watch it, but it's like this girl goes on to Christian Mingle to, to meet somebody online. And then she says, well, all the good guys seem to be those Christian guys. So she pretends to be a Christian. It's just really funny. You know, she's like, praise the Lord, you know? <laughs> she's like, anyways, in the movie, she gets saved, okay? So there is redemption in Christian Mingle. So uh, now my kids are really going to flip out that I talked about it publicly. But anyways... But you see, we can't, we can't do that forever. You can't fake Christianity, right? You can't fake uh, with your mouth or with your... your it's a spirit. The, God is looking for, for worshipers who respond to them from their spirit. Uh, responding to the Lord and say that we worship in spirit and in truth with all of that we are. The, all that we are. So the importance... Let's talk about the importance of your spirit. The importance of developing your spirit. Your spirit, again, it lives on into eternity, okay? This is not just for now. This is for forever. And so it's kind of sad if we spend a whole lot of time working on the body and developing our body, spend more time working on our body than we spend developing our spirit. Come on. You know that you and I, again, uh, you, have the, you can't see with your natural eyes, but you are spirit. We are spirit. And so it behooves us to spend time to develop our spirit. I want to have a large spirit. I want to have a spirit that's mature and developed and able to respond to God. Now, in the world, there is some crazy things happening. Almost like every time you look at the news, there's something more horrible. And, you know, we can get, uh, it can make you depressed if that's all you look at. But you see, this is an opportunity for us in this day, in this hour, to keep developing our spirit so that we are not dragged down and we are not sucked in to the, the sin or the errors of the world or deceived. Like I, I remember, um, you know, I really have been praying for Justin Trudeau. Please pray for Justin Trudeau. Come on. That is our, our duty as Christians, you know, to pray for those in authority. And I, I think it was yesterday or day before I was driving our... Uh, anyways, when I got to my emails, I was looking in there. He's just lowered the age of consent for anal sex to 16. And I'm thinking, is there any more bad news? Like, <laughs> it almost feels like every time there's something more dark and there's more, not, not just here, but around the world. And by the way, I was in Kansas City, and I, I wrote it in that little, if anybody actually reads the pastor's blurb in the bulletin, uh, I wrote in there about how uh, America that week before last was just, it's in a terrible week, a terrible week of tragedy where young black men were killed by white policemen sparking yet another, uh, you know, more re riots and, and uh, the killing of five policemen in Dallas and injuring of seven others. And, 
And, and so then sometimes, you know, I felt like it was a wake-up call for me personally. And I believe it should be a wake-up call for the body of Christ. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes, you know, the, some of us, you know, the Anglophones here, or the, the uh, you know, white from Northern uh, European descent, we can look and say, wow, you know, it's, it's their problem, man. You know, they must have been doing something wrong. Well, it's interesting because my eyes were open because I spoke to some young black men and discovered, for example, that one of them, he was, he was pulled over 12 times in the span of seven months, 12 times for no reason, for not doing anything wrong. Okay, now what I'm trying to say is, I'm not trying to say, it, it, there's most of the, of the white policemen are good and righteous and upstanding, but there's a very real spirit of racism that is going on yet today. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. And so it's like for us as the church not to bury our heads and think, oh, well, that doesn't really happen. It does. Just like we needed to wake up to the abortion issue. All right, that babies were being aborted and are being aborted, and that we need to have a, a, first of all, pray, yes, but have a voice wherever possible, as well as the sex trafficking victim, as well as poverty, but also for the issue of racism, which may not seem as bad in Canada as it is in America, uh, but yet, you see, the heart of the Father is to bring us into the John 17 spirit of unity. Come on. And that we are one in Him. All right, Jesus was a Jew, okay, and that's going to be the ultimate bringing together of the, of the Jew and the Arab, you know, bringing together of Ishmael and Isaac. Come on, Jesus is crying out for that unity to come upon the, upon the earth. And so anyway, so I felt like it was a wake-up call for me, you know, uh, is there stuff in me that the Lord is revealing or healing and that we would be a voice and so there's a lot of darkness, there's a lot of crazy things happening in the world. And you see, even more so, do we need to develop our spirit and pay attention to our spirit that we are living you know, in oneness with the Lord, that we are living as powerful, anointed men and women of God, making a difference, being agents of reconciliation and love and, and breakthrough in the nations, because truly... Jesus Christ is the only solution to what we're hearing. Come on. The Prince of Peace, he is the solution, the resolution, and things will not be made right completely until he comes again, although we can be agents of change right here in the earth and transformation. So our spirit very much affects the soul and the body, and the soul and the body affect the spirit. And so have you ever seen somebody just so filled with the Spirit that they actually look and appear beautiful? Have you noticed that? It's like, you know, they appear younger or whatever. That's the Spirit of God can actually affect our appearance. Or have you seen the opposite? People who, you know, are so dragged down and weighed down by the world, they actually appear older, they appear more, you know, dragged out. And so this can, they all affect each other. Now, when I was uh, in grade 7, I was 12 years old when I actually got born again. I had encounters with the Lord before that, but I actually was born again when I was 12. And before that, I was actually like a mediocre student. I really struggled with telling time. I, I just had the hard time figuring out how to tell time. And I was in a mediocre reading class, and so it was just kind of, you know, sort of get by. And I was a farm girl and didn't really want to be in school anyways, you know, want to be with my horses. But um, when I got saved, something happened to my brain. I am not kidding. It's like the Spirit of God inside of me affected my soul so that my understanding increased and I went from mediocrity to a straight A student and stayed a straight A student. And I know I did work. I mean, I, I was studious, but at the same time, I felt it. Something happened to my brain. And it was like, I believe that the Spirit of God inside of us should affect all of these areas, how we appear, how we think. Now, the opposite is also true, because when we look at people doing some of these crazy things around the world, suicide bombings, killings, uh, some of the killings in their own family, like mothers shooting children or killing children that's been happening, you think, how in the world does this happen? But you see, there's also that very real demonic realm. The demonic realm wants to affect people's spirit and affect their mind and their emotions and speak lies and whispers. I was praying last night, uh, speaking at those Hamilton revival meetings. By the way, God is doing some amazing things in Hamilton last night. And there was a girl who responded to a call for discouragement and depression. And she is suicidal thoughts, suicidal uh, spirit was upon her. And the Lord just absolutely touched her and, and blasted her. 
But you see, that's a very real way of how the invasion of the dark side, which can affect us. Now, one of our best attended uh, mini conferences was Deliverance. How many were at the Deliverance conference? That was awesome. We need to, we're going to be doing it again, by the way. We have it booked again for next, next um, April. But I want to read to you, this is, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Leonard Ravenhill. Leonard Ravenhill was a great um, revivalist, but this is his daughter-in-law. Yeah, married to his son. I just picked up this book in a bookstore. It's, named, uh, it's called Touched by Heaven by Nancy Ravenhill. But she was raised uh, in a home where her father and mother would argue a lot, and then her father would flip into an angry rage and abuse her. He would take out his anger on his wife or life itself on this daughter. And she says, uh, I want you to listen to this. One night was like any other night. I listened to my parents argue. And Daddy, he was scowling and always scowling and looking irritated. Sometimes darkness would come over him. And this night, I was to see that evil with new eyes. Their voices escalated. I was not able to slip away to my room in time. I gasped as he pulled my arm roughly, pushed me into a corner. I watched, shaking, as he took off his belt and the blows began. This time my mother wept, but once again she did not come to my rescue. I hung my head and took it. When finally his fury was spent, I slowly made my way up to the sanctuary of my bedroom. Their arguing resumed, but I shut my door and the bedroom walls blocked their voices. I see now that I stood at a crossroads this night and that my future would be shaped in part by how I responded to the pain. There on my knees, I responded in a way that I believe opened the door to receiving his ministry through the supernatural. That action was simply to cry out to the Lord with my whole heart and soul. You're real, Lord Jesus, I said. I'm going to come to you with my whole heart. I held nothing back. Taking a breath, I said through my tears, Jesus, my father, he's so mean to me. I don't like my parents anymore. I don't know what to do. Please help me. I did not see him this time, Jesus, but I knew he was there. The presence of the Lord was all around me. Then quietly, quickly, I felt myself going up into the atmosphere. I thought that every part of me had gone into a heavenly place, but I realized later my body had remained in my bed. I hung suspended in midair, and even though I could not see Jesus, I knew he was there. Where am I? I asked. And he said, this is where Satan and the demons live. But where am I? This is the second heaven, Jesus said. Everything moved around me in slow motion. I was not afraid because I was with Jesus. Odd creatures glided slowly in the distance. Then one or two would slide towards me, floating around. They were grotesque beings that I never could have imagined. One, two looked as if their bodies were box-shaped, either rectangular or square. One was like a pyramid. The boxes looked like cardboard, gray, white, silver, all subdued. Their heads and necks stuck out of the boxes. Even their hair was grotesque. It stuck out like matted straw. They looked like a combination of part animal, part human. Some had tails stretching out, but their eyes looked human. Some had scales, but they were alive. They moved close enough for me to see them clearly, but, and they projected evil. At least 20 of these beings wafted around me, circling, looking at me. They stayed a good six feet away. A boundary separated us. As I said, I was not afraid, I was just observing, and all this time I knew I was not in heaven, but in the atmosphere, which amazed me. There was quietness and peace, because Jesus was there. Jesus wanted to teach me something through this. What was it? Clearly, he wanted me to see that this realm and understand it, that this affects the, supernat the supernatural. These beings were real. I had no doubt they were. Did they have influence on my life? It makes sense to me that they did. Because I had the same feeling from them as the feeling I got when my father was so angry and thrashing about. And that, I realized, was the point. I think that Jesus was showing me that this was the reason my dad was the way he was. He was being harassed by these demons. And when he began arguing with my mother and got so frustrated, these evil beings came into the house, the blackness and the darkness. Whoa. Ephesians 6.12 says this. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly realms. Now, the actual term second heaven is not used in the Bible, but this reference in Ephesians 6 generally refers to it. The first heaven realm is this, you see me, I see you. Third heaven, 2 Corinthians 12, about the realm of, of heaven and, the, and where, G, where the Lord dwells right now. But Come on, what I'm trying to get here is there is a very real spiritual realm. Come on, talking to somebody. And sometimes when we do the things we do not want to do, there is an influence of dark spirits that can oppress or harass. But the good news is that Jesus Christ is here to set 
us free. The good news is that we can learn to develop our spirit to become strong, to resist the temptations of evil. Now, I know this personally. Some of you have known my story that I had deliverance and I needed deliverance. And I remember I actually had some situations when I was a child that opened doors that were of no fault of my own. However, later there was sin in, in place. And you want to know one of the ways that we can defeat our spirit or weaken our spirit is 1 Corinthians 6 says, in sexual activity that is not of God. In verse 18, it says, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit in, in whom is in you, that you have from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God with your body. See, one of the ways that we can become oppressed by demonic beings is for willful sin, rebellion, and especially, as this verse talks about, sexual immorality. Now, God is just not like, oh, I just want to make them so they don't have any fun. Come on. This is, it's a whole lot more fun to live in righteousness and holiness and purity. And our world is bombarded. Do you know when Brexit, Brexit happened, right? The UK exited from, um, from, is, you know, voted to exit from the European uh, Union. Do you know that for the first time in Google search engines, the word Brexit actually trumped the word porn in search engines? What is the sad point of that? The sad point is that porn tops search engines any other time. The porn industry is a billion dollar industry absolutely destroying marriages and families. And we heard it on our stage before by Gordon Robertson when he was here. It rewires the brain of people and actually makes them less intelligent. What we're talking about is powerful demonic spirits that we want to have nothing to do with. Now, in my life, I remember uh, at a period of time of just some, before I was married, just some crazy stuff, you know, I could pick up any guy that I wanted, and I felt this sort of sick kind of power, had this authority or power until deliverance. And I remember getting deliverance, and it was powerful, and there was these sexual spirits that absolutely came off of me as I repented before the Lord. And I'll never forget what the Lord spoke to me, and he said this, Patricia, let not a dog return to its vomit. And I was like, whoa, I know that's in the scriptures, but that seems a bit harsh, God. And he was, his point was this, do not go back to those ways. And I knew it. And it was very, I remember being visited in the night by spirits. I actually would see them. And I would say, in Jesus' name, you go. In Jesus' name, I'm free. In Jesus' name. Now, I needed to start to develop my spirit. I needed to start to develop and let my spirit win over flesh which I did, and praise God, you know, have lived righteously since that time of deliverance. But I know, come on, I know the power of the freedom of the blood of Jesus. Because I think what happens sometimes is that we can believe lies to say, well, this is just too powerful. Well, I've been doing this for so long. Or, well, uh, you know, uh, it's just like, you know, in denomination or generational things that have been in the family line, you know, for years and years. Jesus is bigger than any demonic generational spirit. His blood has paid the price of freedom for you and me. And hallelujah for deliverance. That was awesome. But then it was like, it's like, it's true. You know, God will not do your part and you cannot do his part. We need him, but then we grow up. It's like, okay, I want to be able to feed my spirit and grow my spirit so that I don't slip back or I don't, you know, fall into ways that are, that are not of God. So I want to talk for a few minutes about this. You know, you've heard it said before, but in, by the way, in Galatians 5, it talks about that the, the walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So in a sense, we're in this war. But we can win this war, and it gets easier and easier and easier. And those who, have been, who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, we also walk in the Spirit. But who's going to win? Who's going to win? The Spirit, the Holy Spirit in you and your spirit, one with Him rising up, or is the flesh or the carnal nature? Who's going to win? It's very simple. It's like the dog fight. The two dogs fighting. Who's going to win the dog fight? 
It's the dog you feed. It's the one you feed, your spirit or your flesh. That's who's going to win. So this is some ways of how to feed your spirit, of how to develop your spirit. Again, more important even than your body, although take care of your body. We want to live long in the earth. We want to be healthy. But developing your spirit, Daniel 5, it talks about that Daniel had an excellent spirit. Well, he developed it. So a good goal in life is to have a large, developed, mature spirit. Well, salvation, number one, the inhabiting of the Holy Spirit inside of us. That's the big one. He was joined with the Lord as one with him, as I mentioned. What you feed your spirit with, the Word of God. When we read the Word of God, it's like when we get our bodies, by the way, out of bed or a little earlier or whatever, when we, when we lead from the Spirit, all right, we lead from the Spirit and, and have time to uh, come before the Lord and read the Word of God. That helps Because how did Jesus confront the devil in the wilderness? What did he say? It is written. It is written. Come on, what does it say? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. But don't forget the first part. Resist the devil, okay? Resist the devil. Well, you know, it's like sometimes we have to rise up in the word of God. We have to rise up in our God-given authority. What does the word of God say? It is a great weapon of warfare. The Bible calls it a sword, okay? So it's like we, it is written that you know, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It is written that I am loved. It is written that I am triumphant in all things. He who the Son is set free is free indeed. So we begin to quote and know the word of God, knowing the voice of God. John 6, 63 says, it's the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak are spirit and life. God's words to us are spirit. They strengthen our spirit as we practice hearing the still small voice, the voice of God. David strengthened himself in the Lord, and David inquired the Lord. Prayer, of course, uh, builds our spirit. Communion with God strengthens us. And giving uh, time to him in prayer. Now, on the heels of that, I want to talk for a moment on speaking in tongues. If you have the God-given gift to speak in tongues, it's another thing to use it. (laughs) And we can pray for you if you'd like to receive that today. And to use your gift of speaking in tongues, because the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 14, that it edifies us. It edifies the believer. We are edified. We are built up. As we speak in tongues. Now, I've, I've said this study before, but there's a guy by the name of Carl Peterson from Oral Roberts University who studied the brain as it pertains to glossolalia speaking in tongues. And that secretion, there is actually two secretions I learned, two secretions that are secreted in the human brain when glossolalia or speaking in tongues happens that is not secreted in any other human activity. And those secretions boost our immune system 35 to 40%. Come on, makes you healthier. Isn't that good? But I found out some new studies that I I hadn't known. These are actually recorded in the New York Times, published the findings of two other studies of speaking in tongues. One was done at the University of Pennsylvania, and it was where they took brain images of five women who were speaking in tongues. When they spoke in tongues, they took these brain images and they found out that their frontal lobes were quiet during the activity when they were speaking in tongues. Now, the frontal lobes of the brain are normally where the thought process happened and where people control what they do. So controlling your mouth or controlling. But in other words, that was very unusual that the frontal lobes were quiet and proving, these uh, psychologists said, it proves, it was showing that what these people were saying was true, that God was speaking through them. Isn't that interesting? So your intellect and your normal functions of the brain are not operating when you speak in tongues. Another study that was done of a thousand evangelical Christians in uh, England, thousand evangelical Christians, and those who practiced speaking in tongues were more emotionally stable. Hallelujah. All right. So there you go. But it's another thing to do it, right? Do it. Speaking tongues. Like, I know some that do an hour a day. It's like, wow. But you know, when I'm driving, when I'm walking the dog, when I'm doing whatever, just just pray in tongues, speak in tongues, use it. Builds up your spirits. Okay, fasting. Fasting, the flesh is made weak in fasting, but the spirit is strengthened. You know, sometimes what our big fear of fasting is the, the fear of actually doing it. When you actually do it, it's really not that bad. 
but it's like fasting, whatever it looks like for you. You can ask God, but having a fasting routine, a building up of your spirit. Your spirit is made strong. Giving. Jesus talked about the three things we do in secret, praying, fasting, giving, in the Sermon on the Mount. Do you know that our giving is when we give money to the things of the Lord, you're giving power because power is money and money is power. It's like part of your strength. So you're actually making yourself weaker in a sense by giving money away for the purposes of the kingdom. And when you give, I don't understand it, but Jesus just says, do it. And what happens is we're strengthened. Remember like Cornelius, the, it was said of him, that his prayers and his alms or his giving were went up before the heavens, and that's when God responded to him. And it talks about the in the Bible. Soaking, all right? Soaking, as we know, Isaiah 40, 31, they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Wait on the Lord. You will mount up with wings as eagles, run in an aqua weary, and walk and not faint. Soaking, whatever it looks like for you. I have an iPod, goes everywhere I go. Literally soak uh, every day. And the time frame will depend on the day, but I really feel like I am before the presence of the Lord, you know, sensing that the fruit of the Spirit coming in, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. So soaking in His presence, taking time just to be with the Holy Spirit, taking time just to receive of the, of the fruit of the Spirit. Worship, obviously music can affect us. Worship, you know, putting on worship or being in a place of worship, it builds us up, it builds up our spirit. How about communion? Taking communion. I recommend you take communion more than just once a month at church. Have communion with your kids. Remind yourselves as to what Jesus paid for. His blood was shed so we could be free and healed. And the confession of our mouth. This is a powerful one. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. What you say about yourself, what you say about others, what you prophesy, what you declare. You know, I call them decrees, but really whatever it is that you want to call it, it's just starting to speak truth, the truth of God into your realm of existence that absolutely changes things around us and builds up our spirit. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so when we hear it, even through our own mouth, our faith rises. Our faith is built. I have lots of different, I've probably said this before from the stage, but uh, things like even, I am loved by God. I love, I am loved. The Lord delights in me, he calls me his delight, his treasure. His heart is ravished for me. You see, I'm reminding myself, I found this so, so incredible when the Lord taught me this some years ago, is to remind myself, to remind ourselves who we are in him building up our spirit because the enemy wants you to believe you're no good you know this you're not that you 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 can't do this and so it's combating the agreement with you know disagreeing with hell and agreeing with heaven come on somebody say hallelujah agreeing with heaven agreeing with what god says and what he wants to do absolutely will change your life if you begin to do this. Start to have some decrees, some, you know, make sure they align with the Word of God, but about yourself. Some of the decrees, I, I have a few carnal ones, they're not too bad, but things like, I look great, I feel great, I weigh what God wants me to weigh, I have lots of energy, I sleep well, my hair is naturally beautiful, and I, I you know what, I live with that, come on. <laughs> Because I just want to agree with heaven and not agree with hell, you know? It's like, oh, yeah, because I, I believe for years I was really ugly and this and that. And it's like, oh, my goodness, that's not what God says about you. God doesn't say you're fat. He doesn't say there's no hope. And so it's time that we stop speaking in agreement with the enemy. I'm talking to somebody here. It's time that we stop speaking and declaring in agreement with darkness because it weakens your spirit. It weakens your spirit when you speak out, when your soul is coming into agreement with darkness. And so on the opposite realm, what does God say? I want my soul and my words to align, my mouth, my body to align with what the Lord says and it will change the way that we live. How else can we weaken our spirit? Not that we would want to, but I think a big thing is our downtime. What do you do with your downtime? What do I do with my downtime? In other words, you're not working, you're not in church, you're not in a cell group or whatever. You got time on your hand. Do you know that sometimes that's the, that's the time when there's, there's traps that are set? What do you do with your downtime? How do you spend your time off? 
And I am not saying that you need to go and read your Bible 24-7. I am not saying that. But I am saying that you need to guard. We need to guard our downtime. It's like, I heard this said and I agree. If you lose your way in the mundane, you will lose your way in the revival. If you lose your way in the mundane, the mundane of life, like the farmer, you know, who sows the seed and has to wait for the crops, and there's mundaneness, there's mundaneness, but there's fruit in the end. So what do you do? What do I do in our downtime? And I just feel like there's so many traps of the enemy, either on the internet or on uh, entertainment, and I'm not, I watch movies, I saw Tarzan, okay, and I was like, oh. yeah, so my kids really wanted to see Tarzan. And I saw Tarzan, so I, I do see movies and that sort of thing, but it's like there's such a need to guard what we see, what goes through these eye gates, what goes through these ear gates. What do you do with your downtime? Watch out, because that's a big way of when we're guard is down and, and we're trying to, you know, just chill, but where it's the enemy wants to trap us into watching things or entertainment or doing things that are just contrary to what would build our spirit. So, Lord, help us in our downtime. Help us in our time that is, um, you know, it, it's not dictated by working or life or whatever. Let's all stand together, and I'll have the worship team come back up. Psalm 31.5 says, Into your hand I commit my spirit. Jesus quoted David when he said that. Into your hand I commit my spirit. I want to grow. We need to grow incrementally in our spirit. It doesn't happen all at once. But it's where our history in God is developed where we give to him our downtime, we give to him our, our time, we give to him of our, our strength, of our schedule, our spirit begins to strengthen. And I tell you, I don't know what's going to happen, but we've seen even in the last few months, we've seen since the beginning of this year, tremendous evil released on the earth, tremendous things happening that are so very dark. And lawlessness will abound, and there's turmoil and all of these things. But there's also the building up in the body of Christ. There's also the, the people getting saved, the good news of what God is doing. But it's like what the Lord is crying out for you and I, I believe in this day and this hour, is strengthen your spirit. Strengthen your spirit. That no matter what comes, it's like that tree with very developed root structure and it's, you know, anchored in God, anchored in who He is, anchored in His voice, anchored in His Word, that when the waves come or when the winds blow or whatever, we are anchored. Our spirit is strong. We will not buckle. We will not turn tail and run or we will not fear. We will stand in faith as our spirit is strengthened in Him. I believe that you know, I know this may seem the craziest thing, but I just felt like God said he was going to do some deliverance this morning. It's like, okay, God, you do whatever you want to do. I just felt like there's some things that, you know, have, you, know you do the things that you do not want to do and don't always understand why. The things that were, whatever, maybe it's generational, maybe it's through... Uh, abuse, maybe it's through open doors in the past of willful sin, that there's been stuff that has tried to oppress your spirit from dark side. And there is a very real spirit realm. And our resisting of that devil, now our uh, agreement with God for freedom, and many times we, we need each other in this as the body of Christ. A lot of the freedom I've got is from others praying for me as well as alone with the Lord. But this morning, for whatever the Lord wants to pour out, let's just agree with Him. Is that okay? Yeah. Lord, we just give ourselves to You. Lord, we give ourselves to You. We, Father, we, we just say that we want to develop our spirit. We want to be strengthened in our spirit. We want to have a developed, mature spirit before You. And Lord, in this place, I pray in the name of Jesus that where there's been oppressive spirits, where there's been demonic influence, God, where there's been generational things, where there's been oppression, demonic addictions and influence, thoughts, in the name of Jesus, we pray a breaking through the power of the blood of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would come, that you would strengthen. I just even feel for some of you right now, just begin to repent. If there's things that you felt like you've been doing and are doing it again, or, or you know, I, God, no, it's not, you know, it's not about, you know, me, or it, it's about you and God, you and God. Just begin to repent before Him. Lord, forgive me. 
Lord, I'm asking for mercy. Maybe you've asked for forgiveness a hundred times. But you know what? Today is a day of freedom. Today is a day where the Lord is coming, I believe, to put an axe to the root. Ho! Oh, to put an axe to the root. In the name of Jesus, freedom, 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 freedom. I see depression, freedom in the name of Jesus. I see suicidal discouragement off in the name of Jesus, freedom, freedom through the power of the blood of Jesus. I also even see like spirits that have brought sickness, sickness and illness, even fibromyalgia and energy sapping spirits. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Freedom in the name of Jesus. God, come in your power. Holy Spirit, just brood over this place. Let your power be poured out. Let your glory come, oh God. Freedom, freedom, sickness, illness, diseases, cancer, spirits attached to cancer. In Jesus' name, come in your power, Lord. Come in your glory, Lord. Come in your freedom, Lord. Freedom, freedom, sexual sin. In Jesus' name, sexual sin. There is freedom now. Father, I ask that you would come in your power and your glory. Freedom in Jesus' name from sexual spirits and sexual sin. Just bring it to the Lord right now. Just repent before the Lord. Pornography, open doors, even thoughts, just thoughts, you know, thoughts of lustful thoughts. In Jesus' name, freedom. In Jesus' name, we command those spirits of pornography and incubus, succubus, the male and female sexual spirits. In Jesus' name, we command you by the power and the blood of Jesus to lift off people in this place. Lift off. In Jesus' name, break in, oh God. Just break in. Break in. I even feel like there's something regarding the mind. I, I was saying that when I got saved, my mind became clearer. There's been confusion in the minds of some people. There's been like confusion. Just a spirits of confusion not knowing you know just a lack of clarity and thinking in Jesus name freedom freedom over your mind confusion goes decision-making becomes clear in the name of Jesus oh fire fire just up and out up and out even for some with a natural breath some of you are even beginning to feel like a burp rising or or a yawn or just just even with a natural breath in Jesus name freedom freedom from oppression freedom from discouragement freedom from every oppressive thing generational some have been having nightmares in the night things in the night in Jesus name let there be freedom through the power of the blood of Jesus the freedom that you bring, oh Jesus. The freedom that you bring through your shed blood. We say yes. We say yes. We say yes. Hope. Oh, I'd like to have a, a couple of fire tunnels real quick here. If you guys can help me set this up. We just want to pray. We're going to lay hands on anybody that wants prayer. We're going to pray that the Lord would enlarge and bless and mature our spirit. So if you're a cell leader, if you're a one of our ministry team involved in the school of ministry, just come and help us as we have a couple fire tunnels here just real quick. We want to pray for the developing of our spirit, the maturing of our spirit. So just walk through these fire tunnels, just steadily walk through, don't stop because the people behind you want you to keep moving. We're just going to lay hands on you. I believe the Holy Spirit is here in power. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to set captives free. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to help us develop our spirit. And the Spirit leads. The Holy Spirit leads. God in us leads, not our body and not our unredeemed soul. But the Spirit of God inside of us leads and responds. So come Holy Spirit. Just break in, break in. So we're gonna start the fire tunnels on this side. Lord, come in your glory. Lord, come in your fire. Strengthen our spirit, Lord. We commit today to develop our spirit. We commit today to live 
with an enlarged, mature, developed spirit. Break in, Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. This is my desire. 